I was watching, uh, I actually watched Memento again today. I hadn't seen it in, I don't know, 10 years. Uh, but when it had came out, I saw it a million times. I mean, I, I absolutely loved that film. And, you know, it reminded me of, you know, what, first of all, what a great film it is, but how integral really your part is to that movie, to be honest yeah, with you. It, th that part is really, Sammy Jenkins is really the gift in that movie. And if you take a look at all of Chris's films, uh, there's always one kind of part that seems to be a splinter and a piece of wood. Like it seems to be <laughs> this small part and it always provides a gift to the movie, uh, something. Wow. Love the way you put that. If, if, that. if you if you if you look at that, it really is magnificent. It's a terrific film, oh, and it was it was one of those films that, you know, when I got the script, I, I don't know if your listeners are familiar with movie scripts, like standard movie script. First draft is 120 pages, and the producers hate you for that, and they want to batter it down to 110 or even 98 if they can. But the first draft is 120 pages. I get this script of Memento. I don't remember the exact page count, but for the purpose of this story, I will exaggerate so you know what I'm talking about. The script was like 300 pages long. <laughs> so, I'm, I mean, it's like Gone with the Wind. It's like I... <laughs> It's like I got this this tome here, you know, it's the <laughs> script that's so thick that if you were a baby, you were five years old, your mom would put that underneath you so you would reach the tabletop. It's this gigantic thing. And I'm going like, well, this has got to be the worst damn script in the world. This is terrible. But I promised John Papsidera, the casting director, my agent, okay, I'll read this script. So I sit down, I, I take provisions, food, coffee, alcohol, all sorts of things to try to get through this script. And I get through about halfway through, and my wife came upstairs, and I go, damn it, damn it. And she says, terrible. And I go, no, right now it could be the best script I've ever written. And it infuriates me because I know <laughs> that there is no way the screenwriter can continue this for another 150 pages. It's ridiculous. It just infuriates me. So anyway, wow. Anne leaves. Wow. I, I, get to, I get to the end of the script and I throw the script <laughs> across the room and it smashes against the wall and Anne came running up like I had just killed the cat or something. And she came in and said like, what is it, was it terrible? And I said, best script I ever read. Amazing. And the reason the script was so long, it was a combination, I guess, shoot, it had to be, of a shooting script and regular textual script to where each scene described blow by blow how the cameras set in exactly the same place for this scene as the previous scene. And it's going over Sammy's shoulder to Sammy's wife. And then the, we see the couch in exactly the same... You, you, it's all described so as the reader you see, oh, we are, are we going back in time? Is this, is this some sort of weird time travel movie? And it takes you there. And it was, it was spectacular, spectacular script. Thrilled. Wow. Yeah, that's unbelievable. So at that time, you know, this is Christopher Nolan's, right, first big movie he had made, um, Following, I think that's what it's called. The first yeah, one, he, he, he made one before. I think yeah. this is the one that really kind of put him on the map. Yeah, put, put him on the map. So, okay, so for you, you're like, okay, the script is so good. I, I don't really know the director, but this script is so good. And, you know, you just decided to go with it, right? So did you know at that time that was the character you're reading for? Or did you read for yes. another character? Well, they told me I was re uh, reading for Sammy Jenkins, and I called my agent up immediately, and I said, set a meeting up with Chris Nolan. I have to go in on this. I wow. have to go in on this. So I went in, and I met Chris and sat down, and I, I just said, like, incredible script. Threw it across the room. <laughs> Best script. I, uh, I said, I, 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 need, I need to be in, in this movie. And he said, well, you know, there we there's not a lot to read for Sammy Jenkins. I said, well, I'm not going to read for you, Chris. 
I said, because, yeah, you're right. There's no real scene to read except me getting electrocuted by the guy who's testing me, you know, and I go, great scene. Great yeah. scene. I love that scene so much. Yeah, yeah with Tom Lennon. That, that was a great scene. And, uh, and I said, but this is why I want to be in this movie. When actors in L.A. read this script, everybody is, wanna, is going to want to be in this movie. And they will all be good actors. But I have one thing I think that no other actor that sees you will have. And I am the only actor you are going to meet who's actually had amnesia. I know what it is. And Chris goes, you have? I said, yeah, I had an operation for kidney stones and over at Cedar sinai Hospital, and they used an experimental drug on me as a general anesthesia, and the purpose of this drug was for big guys like me, because I'm 6'3", 200 pounds, you know, that they give this drug to big people so you don't have little nurses having to lift people from one uh, bed to another bed. You just tell the big galoot, get up out of the bed, walk, get in that bed. They follow orders, but they immediately forget. It is a medicine that gives you amnesia. So, you know, they take you to the operating room, and they apparently said, Stephen, get up off of this and get on the operating table. You obey, you get there, and you immediately forget what it is. And, and you wow. feel the pain of the operation, but you forget it's, oh just my like, God. it's just like a bad relationship. <laughs> you know, it's like you feel it. It keeps coming back on you like pepperoni pizza at two in the morning. But you forget. You forget. And so I said, Chris, just like any other general anesthetic you have, it takes like a week or so for it to work out of your system afterwards. So when my wife brought me home from the hospital, I still had this stuff in my system. So I would be like born, boom, born at this moment, and I'm standing in our living room, and I'm holding half of a glass of water. Just at that moment I was born. And I did not know if I had drunk half of the glass of water and was returning the half a glass to the kitchen to get more, or if I was mid-drink, I didn't know where I was. And... I would need help to go for, like the worst was when I oh went, God, that sounds I horrifying. Went, <laughs> I went to I went to the potty, and you, you know, and apparently I did, because <laughs> boom, I am born this moment, this moment I didn't exist beforehand, and now I'm standing over the toilet and I'm holding little Steve in my hand, and I am looking and I cannot figure out if I had just peed, if I was about to pee, if I should zip up and leave, what I should, I did not know where I was in the process. And my wife is in the bedroom in the next room and she goes, you finished 10 minutes ago, zip up and get out. <laughs> so, so I knew what it was to have, to be born in that moment and not know where you were, or what you were doing. Yeah, and, wow, and that's, that's crazy. I know, and, and that's why I told Chris before on subsequent meetings, I said that Memento, even though it was not a huge part, it was the most difficult role I ever played to try to recapture the, the real feeling of amnesia of where, not where, you're, not where you're trying to remember. That's the way actors always play. Where am I? What am, no, you're born. <laughs> You're born that one moment. The moment beforehand doesn't exist, and you are just born, and you're innocent. And, you know, you're there with the TV changer, and you see, oh, TV changer. You look up TV, and at that point, the TV's on, and then you forget, oh, there's a TV changer in my hand. But each moment, you're born anew, and it's very difficult to recreate that without overacting. 
You, I mean, you crushed it. This, you know, the you mentioned the TV that that one scene about in the TV in the movie that that one particular clip really encapsulates that where you're angry about changing the channel of something, but your face isn't angry. It just looks like I don't understand what's going on. Change it, and then you see the commercial, and you're happy. You, you get the storyline of it. It was perfect. It just like completely encapsulated everything. Um, no, you, you did that perfectly. I mean, it's, yeah. It's it, it, was, it was a phenomenal movie. I didn't understand the movie. Yet, you know, when I went to see the final version of the movie, I knew it was great and didn't understand it. I went with my son, Robert, who was 12 at the time, and he explained it to me. as. We <laughs> I love that. He, he said, <laughs> Dad, everything Teddy says is true. And Teddy is the Joey Panleone character. He says, everything Joey says is true. So all you have to do is listen to that one character, and he clues you as to where you are in the story. Wow. And I went Smart like, wow, kid. I, oh, yeah. I had no idea. He's very <laughs> Wow, that's so, uh, yeah, you know, again, just watching it recently, I'm still confused. There's still confusing parts to me, um, it, but it moves so beautifully the way it's, it's just so, it's still to this day, such a, you know, the way it's structured is still so odd. And even that first beginning scene uh, shot where the Polaroid and you realize it's going backwards just so cool. Uh, just, just such a great, uh, yeah, just such a great movie. Um, you know, I, I'm curious what it's like in the room with, with, uh, Christopher, when you're actually doing it, is he, you know, very kind of, you do your thing. He's very stick to this. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious about that. Well, as, as just like as a person, he's very much a bon vivant and, and, you know, very, uh, joyous kind of intense fellow, you know, very, determined to do his his work when you're shooting a scene he he is in it he is in it inside out like he is coming up with coverage and how he wants to shoot it and coming up with new ideas of how to shoot it in the moment oh wait a minute this looks great what if we did this what if we change lens and and he's there working with you in the moment but He's got a plan. He's got a plot. But at the same time, he also has, you know, kind of the the courage to make calls on the fly and and change the coverage of, of the shooting. But I got to say, the the set with Chris and with Guy and and it was a joyous set. We we had a phenomenal time shooting that movie. We had a great time. 